when did I first hear about it? That came from Nan. Um, <clears throat> she sent us an email um, telling us about this project. And um, I, I immediately just replied and I said, I, I would love to be a part of it, I don't. I don't know what you need, but just let me know, and and I and I'm in, I'm there. I'm whatever you know, and that's how I got involved in it. Was through Nan giving us the information about it. Yeah, that's pretty much uh, the same story for me about how I got involved with the festival. Plus, I know a lot of other people in other companies around town, and. Um, as I became involved with, with Nan's suggestion and then the things that she was asking us to do, and the, we met several times um, over the period that we were writing the play, um, I heard more people around town getting involved in this festival, and I just thought it was such a great idea because we have to keep theater alive during this odd time. We can't we can't let our love of theater die because of COVID and other worldly things, you know? But Nan was the big catalyst mm -hmm. on that. Yes. Hi, I'm Crystal Jackson. I'm Linda Kearns. I'm Nan McNamara. If you would like to learn more about Actors Co-op, our production in the Together LA Festival called When We Can't Meet, which stars Garrett Botts, Greg Martin, Linda Kearns, Crystal Jackson, and Natalie Hope McMillan. If you'd like to learn about all this and the festival, watch this video. So the play came about because I'm a part of the meetings on Tuesdays with the um, artistic directors around Los Angeles intimate theaters. And the festival was described and I knew that the co-op wanted to be a part of it, um, not only to uh, produce something because we hadn't been on stage in so long, but also, to be a part of this festival with uh, what ended up being 33 other companies. Um, so the, the way that we started is, as Crystal said, I sent out an email and four people um, responded. We, the five of us got together on Zoom and we ended up um, just discussing what the time is that we're living in. Um, you know, the festival didn't necessarily specifically say, hey, write about the pandemic, but that certainly was uh, prevalent on all of our minds, as well as the uh, riots and the um, inequities and uh, racism that, you know, has been the conversation all summer and, and, and to now. And so when we came together, um, we talked about where each of us were at. Garrett Botts, one of the co-writers, um, helped, it, helped uh, facilitate the process by coming up with a prompt for what we might write about. And then we each found that we were gravitated toward a specific topic or word that described what we were experiencing during the pandemic. So whether it was isolation, fear, anger, we each had something that we felt a connection to in our own personal experience. So we went off individually and wrote um, a stream of consciousness kind of monologue. Um, we threw up <laughs> is what I like, to, <laughs> I like to say. We just threw up and, <laughs> and um, tried to, um, you know, write from that really personal place but, you know, in art, the specific becomes universal. And so then when, when everyone sent me their pieces of what they were writing about, their individual internal monologue, um, I took those and put them together in a format that created a, a story of five friends who were meeting weekly for a cocktail hour and experiencing different things, but similar things and how they... Um, you know, would come together and process that. And so um, we read through that draft after everyone had written their individual monologues. I put together the first draft, we read through it. We all made suggestions and adjustments. We read through it again. And then we started um, working on Zoom, rehearsing on Zoom, um, and which was an interesting experience. And then um, felt like we had a, a solid draft and, um, 
that's kind of how it all came about. Yeah, I was basically writing mine from what I was feeling at the time, which was a lot of hurt. Um, I was very angry. Um, so my piece came from, you know, the uh, and I don't want to, I'm, I'm going to get triggered here. Um, are black men that have been, you know, killed um, constantly um, on a regular basis. So it was just something for me that I needed to release. And, um, and I kept um, having to go back and rewrite stuff because I was just, you know, all over the place at, at a certain point. And, um, and I just had to, uh, find a way to bring in, you know, a lot of the keywords that we were given, you know, with God, where is he in all of this? And um, how do we get through this? And how do we get through this together? And um, so um, Nan really did a beautiful job of piecing all of our thoughts and everything that we were going through um, and making this play, you know, resonate with uh, everyone. I, I had said earlier, for me, it was a stream of consciousness um, kind of writing. I, I didn't feel like I was writing specifically a monologue. I was doing what Nancy said, I'm just kind of throwing up on the page. And all of the things that were, were troubling me at that time, which were an enormous amount of things, but at the forefront, certainly COVID and the Black Lives Matter movement and um, my friends that were black, that were, uh, we were having trouble communicating because of the pain that they were in, that while I could understand it, I didn't know how to address it. And taking, taking those, those two subjects and kind of barfing on the page, if you will, and then having to go back and try to edit. I, I think I, what I sent Nan initially really was just stream of consciousness. I don't know that I edited anything out. I might have when I got too rambly like I am now, but she was really responsible for, Nan was really responsible for editing it and, and kind of fitting the piece, the puzzle pieces together into some kind of a shape and giving us a, a, an umbrella, like an overview of everything. I would like for the audience to get out that uh, we are all one, that we um, if we all just take time to just listen to each other and connect with each other and, and tap into each other and um, listen when somebody is going through something and try to understand and also reach out, you know, um, because everyone's voice is important. Everyone is going through something. Everyone is feeling something. And um, it's just important to just, you know, have that open heart that uh, you're not going to pass judgment uh, against somebody because they are feeling a certain way. Um, it's just it's tapping in and just understanding that uh, we are all in this together. I think, um, you know, we're, we're all in this together and we're coming to that togetherness from very different places and um, to, to hear each other's, thoughts and stories and struggle and to to share what each of us is going through even though it might not be terribly pretty or it might not be what you would think that person would feel in an ideal world to be able to share it with each other and to open the door um, in an honest fashion is the thing that ultimately is going to bring us to that place of togetherness that Crystal was talking about. Yeah, I think the only thing I would add in terms of for our audiences, um, well, two things, I guess. One, you know, everybody was really brave in what they what they wrote. You know, it was very um, take the Band-Aid off and just, you know, let it come out. And so I think that that, will resonate with audiences. I think when you're really sharing something specific, I think it it's 
it's going to um, be something that people can identify with. And I think as a Christian company, um, what I hope is that we address our struggles with our faith, with God, with our anger, with him, our um, struggle with, um, you know, what's happening in our world right now. And so I, I think that that is something that I hope audiences will resonate with as well, that um, we're all struggling in this. We're all struggling together. And if we can, as Crystal said, and Linda said, you know, if we can all listen to each other, hopefully the communication can bring us together. And I think this country so needs that right now. They need to be coming together. Well, looking toward the festival and why the festival is, is important. Um, it, number one, it's, it's just great to come together within our company and be able to create something. Um, but to do it with the 33 plus companies that are involved and, you know, the, the work that's gone on behind the scenes from the festival committee and, and the technicians, um, you know, to celebrate really LA theater in this way, to be able to see companies um, that maybe we haven't seen yet. Uh, most of them I, I've been to, but some of them I haven't. And you know, places like Ophelia's Jump to be able to see their work. Um, that's just been really exciting. And to also see what they've been able to do creatively in this new medium, to find, to see how, oh, wow, they took that element of this world and they did this with it. And um, I've been really inspired by watching everybody else's work. And, um, it, you know, we're just so so proud and so grateful to be a part of this community and um and yeah that's that's uh to be a part of this festival is just really exciting yeah what i what i look forward to seeing uh is the creativity of everyone and how everyone is able to just take their uh concepts and just you know be as inventive as they can with what they're the tools that they've get, been given and um and just seeing the love um i spoke about um and in the comments and how everybody's connecting with everybody even though you can't be in the same room with one another um and it's just seeing also familiar faces um i, I saw somebody that i hadn't seen in years um, we did a play together uh, umpteen years ago. So it was just that joy and that smile that came across my face and just warmed my heart because um, I had no idea, you know, he was doing this either. But um, it, it's just the, the joy of seeing this come together in such a beautiful way and, um, and knowing that we're all going to get through this together. We are all there. We're there to support each other. We're there to help each other. We're there to pull each other up. And it's just, it's, it's a beautiful thing. For me, I think it's a lot of the, the festival's importance is the, the bringing together of the entire Los Angeles theater community. Um, that, it, that we're not isolated theaters, that we truly function as a community. And that we're, we don't go to see theater that is at another company in order to, to get snarky about it and say, well, this was wrong and this was wrong. And, 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 and we're going to say, oh, that was right. That was really great. Let's, you know what, next time they do something, let's go see it and let's see how we feel about that. And then let's go support this company over here because we haven't seen anything here. And, and then, you know, feel encouraged by the amount of good work that's going on that um, I think I mentioned before, LA hasn't always had a great theater community. There were not nearly this many theaters when I first moved out here 25 years ago. There were a very small number of theaters and a lot of the theater at the time just really wasn't very good. It wasn't, it didn't have the soul of theater in it. It had the soul of we live in a film and television town and, but we do theater on the side because that makes us feel better. If now this is a theater town, 
And especially with everything going on, um, the, it's important that the theater stay alive and that the companies support each other and see each other's work and support what they're doing, support the positive of it, help each other say, gee, next time you do this, maybe you could try X, Y, and Z. So there's always, there's a constant wanting each other to be better rather than something that is a, that's not a community and also something that's not reality television. I think, I think people must watch the festival and, and the play because I think theater is one of the things that can connect us right now. Um, we're missing it. We're, you know, Linda described earlier, coming together and, and physically being in the same room. Um, Lee Blessing talks about that. You know, you drive to the theater, you go to dinner beforehand, you drive, you've bought the ticket, you're sitting there and you're next to somebody. And, and we can't do that right now. And we can't, um, we can't talk about these things. And I think in our, in our, homes and in our living rooms or our offices, wherever we're watching this festival, I think we're finally going to be able to come together and see, oh yes, there is, there is an end to this at some point. And we're reminded of the amazing work in this town. Um, and not only, you know, whether you're an actor or, or not, whether you're somebody in the industry or not, just the regular layman who wants to come and and experience a story being told well from perhaps a theater that you maybe have never seen. This is a great opportunity for people to see theater that they may not have ever, you know, see works from a theater they may not have ever gone to before. Um, it's cathartic. It's funny. It's um, well produced and it's free. So, um, you know, I see, I see only positives and, and you can sit with your glass of wine, you can comment, you know, mm -hmm. Crystal was talking about in the chat, you can comment, you can, um, you know, theater artists that you maybe have always wanted to chat with or talk with there, there are a lot of them are on this chat and there's some great hosts in between the pieces. There's a great cause that is, you can contribute to. Um, so, uh, you know, color of change. So it, it's, uh, it's just all around, you know, you can't miss it. You, you, you should not miss it. And you can go back and watch if you have missed it. Um, but we still have three more, two more nights, Friday and Saturday, October 16th and October 17th. And I'll just tap into what Dan said. All of that is absolutely true. Um, and also they should watch because it's healing and people need to heal right now. People need to feel good right now. People need to escape right now because so much is going on in the world. So it allows you to come in and just relax and breathe and take in what everybody has put so much hard work into. Yeah, and take in uh, a story that someone else wants to tell that then you're the receptor. I mean, you don't have to do anything. You don't have to get in your car and you don't have to fight the traffic and you don't have to pay for parking. You don't, la, 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 la. I mean, it's almost, hmm, it's almost too easy. Um, <laughs> I don't want this. I don't want it this way. Always. I really don't. I don't like the separation of the zoom theater from real theater. And I would, I thought very much that I would because I'm very comfortable staying in my isolated hole and <laughs> it's important for me to realize how much I miss the communal nature of theater and it's okay if I sit next to the has really bad perfume on it I'll get through the night and but now <laughs> I get to sit at home and and experience theater in a different way you know in, in a way where it makes me focus solely on the story I don't have there's nothing else to play around with you know, I, it's not like I can sit and gaze at the audience. I can't, you gotta stay there. Hi, I'm Crystal Jackson. I'm Linda Kearns. Hi, I'm Nan McNamara. Please go to the website for Together LA Festival and make your reservation to see theater this weekend, October 16th and 17th. It's free. And fun. And good. Enjoy.